my name is Rachel. Welcome to my channel, Learning with Boys. I have four boys, ages 9 to 19, and I've been homeschooling for 13 years. Today, I want to talk about IEW, which is Institute for Excellence in Writing, and the decision of whether it would work for you or not. Um, I want to say the first time that I had heard about IEW was at a very small homeschool convention and I went to a class where somebody spoke about it, explained a lesson, and I want to say my oldest was like in fifth grade, I'd have been fourth, fourth, fifth grade, and when she explained a lesson, I was like, that's it. That's what I want. That'll work. <laughs> um, my oldest is, um, I don't want to say he's completely an introvert, but he is not full of a lot of words. <laughs> um, he's very smart. He's very capable. But to pull those words out is a whole nother story. And now, it doesn't mean that IEW wouldn't help if you have a writer, especially when they're younger, because I feel like it will give it a good process of writing and it also includes grammar and that is what is so helpful that I really liked about IEW. Now, my youngest, 10 years later maybe, he's nine, he'll be in fifth grade next year and I'm praying about, I have not even started IEW with him and I'm praying about starting next year. I thought about this year, but um, we used a curriculum called Heart of Dakota and there's a lot of written narration, there's a lot of writing, and he is probably my one that does enjoy writing and he will come up with a lot of words. <laughs> so, um, but I plan on using that with him because I do like the process, um, but I want to show you sort of where we got started and what we have used and just sort of give you, give you an idea of what and how you can use it. So I will tell you, we did get the teaching writing structure and style. Now, I know everything has been updated and that is one thing I'm praying about. If I start my fifth grade next year, will I want to invest in the updated options? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. <clears throat> I actually have level A, thought I had level A. I can't find it. So I'm wondering if I did sell it. I have level B, I have it right here, I'll show you. Which really, he's smart enough and I think he would be ready to start it. So I just don't know yet. But I purchased level A and purchased this and at the time, remember this was probably like 10, nine, 10 years ago, I ordered off eBay. I ordered everything used. So I really can't trade anything in if that's even an option, I'm not sure. Okay, so I started here and there was DVDs that go with that. Um, I'm not sure if it's all online or if you still have to order the DVDs. Um, if you have several children, it's, it's worth the investment for sure. Um, maybe you could borrow it from somebody. Maybe you could buy it used. I feel like even if you just bought the older version to understand the process of the program, it would be so worth it. Um, and I didn't watch every single thing in here. Um, I watched a lot. And I know a lot of parents are like, well, I'm too busy to deal with that. I just need something that, you know, eh. writing is, it's almost a little bit like math. It's a process that you have to build on. And for me personally, I just can't throw it out there. I just can't say, here you go, do this. It's not going to work. It's really got to be taught in a process form. So I had to take some time to help myself <laughs> so I can help my child. And now... They do have all the online stuff. That's what I'm a little bit curious about. And if you've done it, let me know, even for the high school, because I have a high schooler that I'm praying about trying it out for next year. And I'll tell you a little bit about that later. But this was very helpful. And remember, I'm not a writer. Now, Andrew, I'm going to see if I can say his name right. Andrew Pudua. Let's say that. Andrew Pudua um, teaches this. And he also teaches... Um, the student writing intensive now. 
Now, from what I understand, there's a level A 1 and 2, level B 1 and 2, and C 1 and 2. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Um, I know they would be helpful on the site <clears throat> if you called them, but it used to be level A and then level A continuation, level B and level B continuation, and so on. And we actually have B and the B continuation. Um, so this is level B, praying about what to do next year. We've used this several times over the years with my three older different boys. Um, if my high schooler next year, I'll show you what he's using this year. He is using a couple of the IAW programs. Um, he used some of the B last year um, and did fine. I think that's what's helping him because we're using a theme, themed book this year and I'll show you what that is. So, um, but like I said, whether they're a writer or not a writer, um, it gives you the process and it gives you grammar and it just gives you a lot of dress ups like adjectives and adverbs. And um, my boys, that, that just really helped a lot of things click for them. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple things that we have used. And this is one of them. This is probably one of the first themed books we used and that was the Medieval History Base. Now this is book has been updated too. And the reason I have this book is because we actually did not use Heart of Dakota until my oldest was in sixth grade. And this is used in one of the other programs that he used in seventh. So he took the opportunity in fifth and sixth to get an idea of how the program worked. So this was a little easier flow. So I would suggest for sure doing one of these first if you are not familiar with it at all. And then he did a themed book. And in our curriculum that we use, Heart of Dakota, the, everything was written out for him to do throughout the year. So this worked wonderfully, and it was actually for Resurrection to Reformation. It sort of went into this era of history. So um, my, all my boys have used this. <clears throat> there are vocabulary words in the back of all these books, all the themed books. And a lot of it is just the same as what you would learn in here. It's just more specific. And they have a teacher's book with each of the themed books, which I suggest to have. I think it's helpful. So my boys enjoy the history ones because they enjoy history. So, and <clears throat> it gives a little bit, like this has um, a story about the Bisonite Empire. I'm gonna skip a lot. Um, knights in Shining Armor, um, The Magic Lamp, The Knight and the Dragon, The Anointing of King Arthur, um, Guinness Kong and his Hawk. So just those are just some examples of some of the things that they will be writing about. So um, they have used that one and that, like I said, went well for them. Um, Another one that we just did on our own, and that was the US history-based one, and this is an older version, they have an updated version. Um, I have the teachers, and, and I have only used this once, I wanna say my oldest used this one. No, I think my second son used this one too. So, but I usually try to reuse them, either I erase or, um, I just had them do everything in a notebook. So, and that's up to you. Um, what you wanna purchase, of course, you wouldn't have to get the teacher's book each time, so. Now, something I wanna share with you that I don't know if it will be helpful because it all depends on your area, but I'm gonna step back just a little bit when my oldest took level A, and then um, I say that he did the medieval history-based lessons. He actually, um, an opportunity at a co-op opened up and he did the robotics one. And I'm trying to remember what that book is called. I don't even know if they sell it anymore. Now, he was only in seventh grade and that was a big challenge for him because come to find out later, 
it was meant for a little bit older. <laughs> but he enjoyed computers and robotics, and um, he actually did some Lego robotics the following year. Um, so it was interesting to him, but just the writing was <clears throat> a little bit difficult. And like I said, should you help your student? I did. Um, it was not a huge co-op and there was a lot of writing. There was a lot. And I really think it pushed him. And I want to say probably in a good way. At the time, it probably didn't seem good. <laughs> so you have to weigh that out if you want to do a co-op. Um, for the program, now, 10th grade, he did another co-op. Again, it pushed him. Um, because, and even the teacher warned me, so it was my fault, he did um, the advanced U.S. history, and it was not just the writing, it was the literature part of it, too. And he actually did fine with the writing part. The literature was a push, and I think it was just because it wasn't a classroom environment, and he's not one of many words to express what he was reading. <laughs> so that was a little bit of a struggle, but... He did fine with the writing. Um, I think he enjoyed it because it was U.S. history. This is definitely stepped up a level. Um, this is definitely a high school book. So the literature was definitely high school. But it was a good experience for him. My second son took a co-op class, and he ended up doing the elegant essay, and that was in 10th grade. And that went really well for him. Um, the teacher added some of her own stuff in, so it wasn't all just this. Um, but I really think this worked better in a group co-op setting. Probably for me and for him. Um, as I don't know if you have teenagers, when they get a little older and they have to come out of that comfort zone and get something done, it's almost, it's almost like they'll do it better or at least get it done for somebody else. And that's how it's been for me. Now, my third son is coming along and he's not quite so much that way. He almost would prefer not to do a co-op. Uh, and he is in ninth grade and right now I'm not planning on putting him in any co-op for the IEW. Um, this year he is doing the modern world based writing lessons. He chose this one. I want to say that this is more, they say, for middle school. And it probably is, but um, he's not done a lot of this. It does get harder throughout the year. So it starts off a little bit easier, but then I'm, I'm looking at it and realizing that it's, it's going to get more difficult. So I think it's a good start for him for this year because he has a lot of other... Um, work under his belt so I didn't want to make this overwhelming and his only focus um, next year I'm praying about maybe doing the online um, I haven't really even looked into it so I'm not even familiar with how it works yet so that is something I'm hoping in the spring to look into if you have any if you are doing it or have any suggestions I would love to hear them so, but I am going to stick with this. I say that more than likely, Lord willing. We'll stick with IEW for his writing. And um, I want to say that's all we've done. We've done level C, and it really just gets a little bit harder. It's still the same things. I feel like there was a little bit more in C. Um, I can't even find that one. I don't know why. <laughs> it may be packed away, but um, I think B was the last thing we used, so that's why it is out. But I wanted to share a little bit about the writing experience. Now, fix it. Fix it grammar is another thing that we have used from IEW. Fix it grammar, Robin Hood, is the one my ninth grader is using with this book this year. So that just gives you an idea. For a ninth grader, um, they do say that you can start the first book. This is book two. I don't know, like 
fourth, fifth, sixth grade, I think I've heard, and it is easy. I, I've started it, um, I think it's nose tree. I think that's what it's called. Um, I had fiddled around with it a little bit when one of my boys was probably like fifth or sixth grade. And it's probably definitely doable, but I feel like this is a big jump from that. And then I had heard that somebody else had said that. The next book after this, I cannot remember what it's called. Let me see if it gives you an order in here. Yeah, it does. So it'd be Nose Tree, which is book one. This is Robin Hood. And then Frog Prince and Just Dessert is the third one. Now, for me personally, and this is just my personal opinion, I'm probably not going to use that one just because of some of the story I'm, my boys are going to be like. There is just no interest whatsoever. Maybe some boys won't care. Maybe even girls would care. I don't remember the details. I just remember hearing a comment. I looked into it myself because I actually got the book. And I thought, oh no, they would not like this. And I want them, I want it to be something that they would enjoy. And, um, but I will tell you book four is Little Mermaid. And my oldest did that at the co-op with this advanced U.S. history. So, and that was wonderful. I, I think he is more grammatically inclined than he was writing, so he didn't mind the grammar part. I really think it was helpful. He was in 10th grade, um, but that was a good year. He did fine with that. And so I really do like Fix It. My older son is doing well with the Robin Hood this year. We were doing, we were doubling up until about, okay, we're in December. It's probably been about a month. We slowed it down and um, he's just doing one a day. So, and that's okay. I, I thought that that might happen. I had a plan for him to do something else. If he whizzed through it, we were gonna do something next semester, but I'm just gonna let it slow down. I'm gonna let him finish up this, this year with the writing and I think that'll be enough for his ninth grade year. And um, we'll decide on what we'll do next year. I do want to mention one other thing from IEW. Some of their other books, like A Word Right Now. And I would suggest this book or something like this that gives, um, for a word for criticism, it will give a whole list of adjectives, adverbs, verbs um, that you can choose from. and. Um, words for dishonesty, like bluffing, cheating, counterfeit, corrupt, crooked, deceitful. And those are all adjectives. Um, some adverbs would be beguiling, craftily, cunningly, deceptively. And verbs would be um, defraud, duck, dupe. I mean, just words you may not normally think of. I mean, maybe you have a creative writer who does think of all those things, but my boys don't. Um, so this is really helpful with... Um, some of the writing because they will have you add adjectives, adverbs. They want some strong verbs in there. Um, so this is really helpful, especially in the beginning. Now, sometimes my teens now will just use a thesaurus on their phone. So, um, but in the younger years, this was really helpful to give them better examples and it really does help with their vocabulary. And the themed books have vocabulary words. The fix it grammar has vocabulary words. There's constant learning vocabulary words, and that's what I really enjoy about it too. So, no, we don't use a separate vocabulary program because of all that extra. Okay, I did wanna mention one other thing about the teachers, and that is, um, like, my oldest had to, the lessons they teach in here, there's note making and outlining, summarizing from notes. Um, summarizing narrative stories, summarizing reference and library reports, writing from pictures, creative writing, essay writing, critique writing, and, um, and I think that's it. I wanted to mention that you can use this in other subjects. Um, my oldest, when he was at the co-op, he actually took a science class 
um, biology and biology too. Well, his final and I think midterms were more of writing an essay on a specific thing that they learned that semester that he would choose. So this is where we went. We went and watched the videos as review each time just to help us mentally think because like I said, he's not a writer. Um, and we would watch the essay writing one from the teacher's book, not from, you know, A, B, or C. We actually watched it from the teaching writing one. So just to review, okay, this is how it would work for him. And it, it really helped him so much um, each time. Now, I don't know if we did it each time. We at least did it once a year just as a review for the essay. So he could write those papers that he needed for those classes. Um, so, and I actually had him write, I thought, this teacher has a great idea. So that's what I had him do for history also. Um, I think, I can't remember if it was, I think it was his 10th grade year because he had something else. He was doing something else his 9th grade year. Um, and then we continued that his 11th, 11th grade year for history and science. So you can pull this into other subjects and um, really take advantage of what they're learning and help them put it into action. Um, some of the things they're learning, especially in high school when they really need to be thinking about how am I going to lay this out? How am I going to write this paper? Um, and I'm thinking more, you know, I'm thinking more of the reluctant writer. You may have some students that English math was his subject. I mean, he pretty much still tells me, mom, if it was all in numbers, I could work on it all day. <laughs> so, but it's not, there are words in life. So, um, that this was helpful to him. And to do that so I just want to encourage you um, you may have one that it can help you because they are into English and writing and love to study the process of it and like to do like research papers this would really help with the process of it so I wanted to mention that about the teachers there's just so much to learn and like I said I just wanted to share some of our experiences, some ideas that, um, like the, the essay and just the different options that they have, the different ways you can go about doing it. And even if it takes you two years to finish one of these books when they're younger, especially when they're younger, I mean, if you just work on it a few days a week, if you work on um, one whole lesson and then wait another week or two and then work on another lesson, especially if you decide to start when they're in third, fourth, or fifth grade because um, they're still learning so much information and the more information they learn, writing will become easier for them because um, so. Well, I appreciate you all watching. Please comment below. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video, if it was encouraging, share with your friends, and I would love for you to subscribe. That would encourage me, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you so much.